Hello, it's Jane here. Welcome, welcome back. I hope you've all been keeping well. Uh, the purpose of this video today is a story time about the period when I initially got to UK. So I came to UK about 16, 17 years ago. My uncle very kindly and generously financed me to come to UK to do my education. Uh, and I was first based in Lancaster. I have I have cousins in UK and my brother was in the UK at the time. So the process of coming to UK for me was quite straightforward. So uh, I got into a university, I got all the paperwork. I had just finished doing my degree in Kenya and I had passed with the first class uh, honours. So I was coming for the master. So I had all my paperwork in place. Uh, the other thing that can be an issue to gain to UK is getting your the finances as I said my uncle financed it me and he provided a back statement and he was financing me so I did not have an issue on the financial on the finance side and getting the bank statements and he had done that before so he already had a track record with the Home Office or the British High Commission in Kenya which is the other thing. If the person financing you it's new is new in their books, they will scrutinize more. If they've done it before and there were never any issues, then it is an easier process because there's already their credibility and they're most likely going to believe their bank statements. A, because they've seen them before and B, it's because there's never been any issue with with, with those bank statements or that person. Um, and so the other thing that's required is a passport and that's where a little bit of a problem came in. So I applied for my passport in the Haram, I think it's the Harambe house, I don't know, or some, I can't remember what it's called, but it's that building in Nairobi where there used to be the telecoms or maybe the telecoms are still there where you go apply for the passport. So I had my paperwork ready. I had my brother paperwork with me as well. So it, at the time you have, you had to apply for your passport in person. You got your photographs or somebody needs to come and sign at the back, all that. So I had all that, but I also had my brother's paperwork because we were doing the process together. My brother is one year younger than me, but but we, are, we were at the same level in education because he had some illness earlier on in life that made him repeat a year. So, I had his paperwork, I had my paperwork, and it so happens I had the money to pay for both. Although when I was going to the office, I was going to only get my passport. So I get to the counter and I present the paperwork and the guy goes like, oh, what's that? I say, oh, this is my brother's application. Remember, you're supposed to apply for your passport in person. So he goes like, oh, I can process for that as well. I did not bribe, I did not give him any extra money. And so he picks up my brother's details, paperwork, and he processes my passport as well as my brother's passport within absence of my brother. And that's where the problem starts. So somehow they pick up my brother's middle name as my surname. So they're treating us like a married couple, even though it's the same parent detail, which was a bit confusing. So anyway, they tell me, oh, come back in two weeks. I did not expect the passport to be ready in two weeks, but I'll go back in two weeks. And guess what? They're ready in two weeks. The only issue is my name is wrong. They've used my brother's middle name as my surname. And my brother's passport is perfect. He never showed up to this office, but I did. And I was a bit annoyed at that point. Then I said, oh, I, I cannot have this because the rest of my documents have different names. Oh, they said, oh, don't worry, we can change it. So I got to the counter to get it changed. It's free of charge. So all they do is put a line across it, put a stamp, and then the different page, the, the countersign, put in the correct name, and they put a stamp on it. So me being Kenyan at the time, I never fully grasped the importance or the issues I would have in future for having that small mistake on my passport. So I go to the British High Commission, I apply for my visa and get through. Nobody ever risked the issue with the name. Uh, they they trusted the stamp of the change of name. So I get to the UK, when I'm getting in through the border, nobody ever raised an issue. There was never any issue raised. When I was in the UK as a student, they changed the law such that when you finish your degree, you automatically got one year to stay in UK without having 
to have had a job. So they gave it to everybody who was international students in the UK. So I apply for that visa, pay for it, no issue. Nobody ever raised the name. And then during that extra year of, uh, so now in the second year, they changed that rule where they had said you'd get one year. Now they decided it's going to be two years. And all I needed to do is to extend my visa is send my passport back to the home office and they'll sort it out. And that was never an issue. Sent it and the names were all correct. And they were going off the, 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 page, the handwritten rubber stamped page on my passport with the correct name. Not an issue. Until I decided to move to London and get a job, and that's when the problem started. I go to a work agency and they would not take my passport. They say the name was wrong. I said, yeah, but look at all my, my home office correspondent. Look at all the home office visas. They've accepted the name as by the, the, the handwritten name on the passport. They said, yeah, we know that, but you know, it's different name. There's a lot of uh, fraud in, in London. So I was like, oh, maybe this, this agency is being hyper vigilant. I'll go to another one. So I went to about four or five work agencies and none of them would touch my paperwork, even though the home office was okay with it. So I was stuck in London, not able to get a job because of that simple mistake. And that meant I had to then go to the high commission office in London to, to process a new passport. And it took such a long time. So I had to return to Manchester, uh, but I could not leave my passport with the Kenyan <laughs> higher commission because then I didn't have a job and I don't have any proof of my passport or my visa. So I had to come back to Manchester and try to get a job with the passport before I can have it, the name changed. So came back to Manchester, got a job, then it was a pa temporary job, got a job, got myself settled, then sent my passport to be sorted out by the Kenyan High Commission. So the Kenyan High Commission in London does not have to process the paperwork in London. So they have to send your passport to Kenya, then the passport is sent back. And that took about three, four months. So I was stuck in the job. I cannot look for another job. All I had to do is hope that nobody fires me because if they fired me, then I'm out of a job until I got a passport. And my passport, I got a new passport with the correct name and, and then, it was fine from there, but I still had to keep the old one because the old one has all this track record of, of all the visas and my entry to the UK, which I could not prove on my new passport, which had the correct name on the correct page. And anyway, this is just a story just to highlight. If anything is wrong on your passport before you come into Kenya, you need a brand new, brand new passport issued to you because the problems it will result some, sometimes it's such a, a lengthy and hard process uh, to have it corrected. It's easier to have it corrected in Kenya. And I know some of the officers there will be like, oh, it should be fine, it should be fine. No, there's a chance that it might not be fine. And for that reason, you need to have it corrected. Having said that, nobody else in my family has ever had any issues with their passport. My mom seems to have a quite an easy time with uh, the passport people or with uh, immigration. She doesn't seem to have any issues. But it goes back to what I was saying before. If there is a track record of you visiting the UK and you've never had any issues, you've not overstayed, you've never been put, stopped at the border when you're answering, you've never had any issues, it's usually fine because my mum has never been stopped. And she, when she comes over, she's never told me she's had any issue. In fact, she's usually very quick to get out. And that's to do with your track record. So if you get it wrong one time at the start, especially with the UK border officers, then they have that on the system and it shows. And every time you come up, you come in, it will flag up and, and they will uh, give you a hard time. So moral of the story is just make sure you get all your paper work in order and get your answers correct when you're entering. Don't, don't assume they're just going to catch you up. Just give them what they want. And then in future, you'll have a much better time. And so yeah, that's my story time regarding my passport and how it was messed up. I hope this is of benefit to, in, to somebody. Thank you for watching. Bye.